ดีค่ะสวัสดีครับ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. Today I'm actually in Coquitlam, which is about a, an hour outside of Vancouver, visiting with my friend Rodney. สวัสดีค่ะ Now Rodney is a fishing expert, and he recently caught this beautiful halibut. So I'm here to give that halibut a little Thai treatment. Today we're making p l a r a t p r i k So p l a means fish. Rat means to pour sauce over something, and prik means chili. So it's basically a fish dish with a chili-based sauce that's sweet and sour and super delicious. Now, since Rodney is here, I'm going to take advantage of your knowledge and mm -hmm. let you educate us all a little bit about halibut. So this is a wild Pacific halibut, right? right? Now, where's their natural habitat? Right. Basically, right along the the coast of British Columbia, you can find halibut. Right. Um, they usually And around, let's say, the 100 feet of water. Sometimes a little closer in early in the season, like spring. Um, towards uh, as the season goes along, they move into deeper water as well. Okay. Yeah, so you can find them along the coast of Vancouver Island, okay. um, all the way up to Queen Charlotte Island. Cool. <laughs> and how big was this fish that you caught? Well, this fish was around 20 pound. Okay. Um, so that's the typical size. Uh, you want to get when you go out and catch them. Um, they can grow up to a hundred pound, but um, those fish are not as good when it comes to eating. So anywhere between 10 and 20 pound is what you're looking for. Oh, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you were talking about halibut season. Mm -hmm. Now, halibut is available in the store frozen year round, but when is a good season? When is the season for fresh ones? Right, you can find halibut in in the sea all year round. Um, but the the fishing season generally opens around uh, early April, and it can last until the end of summer. Um, but it changes every year, so you have to check the regulations uh, before you go out. Okay. And now halibut, you don't know this because you never buy fish, but I do. <laughs> and halibut is a pretty expensive fish. I've seen them as far as thirty-four dollars a pound. Mm -hmm. Now, for those of us who want something a little more affordable, what would be An alternative that's similar in characteristic as a halibut. Right, for for white flesh fish like these, um, the alternative would be in BC would be uh, rockfish and lean cod, and occasionally you can also find Pacific cod as well um, when it's in season. And lo those three are definitely um, the cheap alternatives in BC. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Rodney. Yeah, you're welcome. You ready to cook? Definitely. Can't All wait. Right. Let's go cooking. Mm -hmm. So first, I'm going to make the sauce. I'm going to make the spice base for the sauce. So I've got here about four to five cloves of garlic into the mortar here, and then I'm going to get a quarter of a teaspoon of white peppercorns. Now, in Asian cuisine, when we say pepper, it automatically is assumed white peppercorn, as opposed to here, where you say salt and pepper, they actually mean black. And white pepper and black pepper, even though they're the same plant, the white pepper is a little bit hotter and has a different aroma. Hmm. So, which actually makes a difference in this dish. And then I've got about two to three cilantro roots that I've chopped up here. I'm add that in. So that's pretty interesting. People don't usually use the roots. No, it's um, unfortunately really underappreciated uh, here in North America. It's just the root of the cilantro plant like this. It's very aromatic. Now, this can actually withstand cooking, as opposed to the leaves. You can't cook the leaves, right? They turn mm -hmm. black, and the fragrance is all gone. This you can add into marinades and things like that. Um, so, if you know someone with a cilantro plant, go ask them for their roots. Don't tell them why. Hmm. <laughs> so they keep giving it to you. Now, yeah. this mixture here, I'm just going to pound into a rough paste. Um, it's actually a, a very basic spice paste that we use often in Thai cooking. This is called rak pak chi katiam pik thai, which mm. means cilantro root, garlic, and pepper. And um, it's almost like a Thai m i r p o i It comes out very often in Thai cooking. So we'll just do a rough paste. So how long do you have to do this? Just until you get to a rough paste, and that's going to differ depending on how heavy duty the mortar is. You could also do this in a Blender, but be very careful not to overdo it. Just pulse it because you don't want a puree. Right. So now that it's kind of halfway there, I'm going to mm -hmm. add the remaining ingredients. I'm going to add about two to three p r i c c i f a or spur chilies, and that's this big guy here, which is very mild. It's barely spicy, if at all. You could substitute other kinds of mild red chilies. Bell peppers will work, but bell pepper is a little bit watery. Mm. But you know. You gotta do what you gotta do, and then I'm also gonna add a little bit extra spice, some Thai chilies. This is the green kind. You can use red Thai chilies. You don't have to add this if you don't want it too spicy. This dish is generally a pretty um, moderately spiced dish, but 
you can adjust that to however you want. And now we're just gonna grind this up to kind of a rough paste as well. So this is pretty much what you're going for. You wanted a paste, but you want it kind of a rough paste, otherwise the sauce won't have any texture. Um, you don't want it to be like, you know, soup or anything. So we're gonna set that aside and then look at the rest of our ingredients, which is our okay. seasoning. Just like set it. it. Yeah. So we've, this dish is also called Plasamrot, which means three flavored fish. Now those three flavors are sweet, which is brought to you by three tablespoons of chopped, finely chopped palm sugar, and which is about 30 grams. I've also got a tablespoon and a half of fish sauce, which is our salty component. And then for our sour component, I've got, um, it's gonna be two and a half tablespoons of tamarind juice. Now, the measurement when I give for tamarind juice, this applies all across recipes, it's just an estimate. The acidity of tamarind varies from brand to brand, from bottle to bottle, particularly if you make it yourself from pulp, so you just have to taste and gauge it. And then I've also got about a quarter cup of roughly chopped cilantro that I'm gonna add at the end. Oh, and another thing, before I cut up all my spirulies, I saved a couple of slices to have as garnish at the end. So before you cut them all up, don't, don't forget to do that. All right, let's go cook the sauce. So I've got a pan here with a couple tablespoons of canola oil in here, and we're gonna saute our herb paste. I'm gonna go in with that. And we're doing this to basically open up the, to cook the garlic and the chilies and to also open up the flavors of the spices. Very important part. And we're just gonna cook this down for about a minute or so. So what you're looking for is for the mixture to start to dry up a little bit. Because there's gonna be a lot of juices that come out from the chili. And the juice, the liquid, will prevent the mixture from getting hot. So when it starts to dry up, that's when the, the mixture is really going to start heating up and opening up all the flavors. To this, I'm going to add our palm sugar. I'm adding the palm sugar first so that it gets first dips at the intense heat so it can start melting. And once you see that the palm sugar is starting to melt, it doesn't take very long, especially if you chop it finely. Then you're going to go in with the water. And the water, this is quarter cup of water, I'm not sure if I mentioned that, but um, it's basically going to loosen up the sauce and mellow out the flavors a little bit. And then the fish sauce. And then our tamarind juice. So two and a half. And then we're just gonna let this simmer for a minute until it reaches a syrupy consistency. And also this allows the herbs and spices and seasoning to really mingle and marry and create a, a cohesive dish. So that's the sauce. That's the sauce. It's fast. Mm -hmm. And now we gotta fry the fish and put the sauce on the fish and it's done. <laughs> so that's done. What you want is kind of like a thick syrupy consistency like this. And then, we're gonna let this sit while we go and fry up our fish. So as you can see, this fish has very uneven thickness and that's probably gonna be the case for a lot of fish. I'm gonna cut this so that we get a little bit more even cooking into two pieces. And so this piece is gonna take a lot longer to cook than this one. And I'm also not going to season this. And normally when you cook fish Western style with like a beurre blanc or fruit salsa, you want to season the fish well with salt. But our sauce is actually very strong. It's sweet and sour and salty. Um, I find that that's sufficient to flavor the fish, the fish once um, everything is tossed together. I'm also going to oil the fish a little bit because halibut is a lean fish and the layer of mm. oil will slow down the moisture lost from the fish as it's cooking in the pan. Oh, I'm also going to pan fry this. Now I have to tell you that traditionally, this fish, this dish is done with whole deep fried fish. But I know that a lot of people are not gonna be able to deep fry a whole fish conveniently at home. So I figured I wanted to show you a way you can still enjoy this dish without it being a big messy production. I've got a big nonstick 
saute pan here with some canola oil or vegetable oil heating at the same time. Now if you're using a non-stick pan, you never want to heat the pan up by itself without anything in it. And the reason is because the non-stick coating is sensitive to overheating. And if the pan is heating by itself, it's easy for you to accidentally overheat it because you can't tell how hot the pan is if there's nothing in the pan. So that's why heating it together, then you have something to watch. And what we're watching for is for the oil to start to shimmer. And once it shimmers for a while, that's when you know that the oil is starting to get hot enough. Okay, so we're gonna go in with our fish now. Now always presentation side down. Which side is presentation side? Whatever side is prettier. So see, this is nice and clean. This one has a lot of gray spots. You wanna go down with the presentation side because when the pan is fresh, that's when that's when the browning is nicer and more even. So we're gonna let this go. And don't touch it, don't move it until you're ready to flip it. Yeah. This one's not ready yet. I'm gonna flip this one. And how you know is you basically watch the opacity line. When it comes up, the thickest part, about halfway through, that's when you know you wanna flip it. This one has a little bit longer to go. That's what you want, that's what you're looking for, and that is achieved by not touching it. I know it's hard sometimes, but... Nice. Now, this side is always going to take less time than it did the other side, because when we started out, the fish was cold. So for the cold fish to cook halfway through, that is, is going to take longer than for a fish that's been somewhat warmed through to cook a little bit, a little bit the other half through. So if the first half took you, say, six minutes, this half should only take maybe three to four minutes. So this little piece here has a thick edge. I'm just going to, it's almost done through. I'm just gonna quickly sear this part. And that prevents this part from overcooking because that's done. And it gives a nice color to that cut surface and it also cooks the other side exclusively, the thicker side. So every fish is different, which is why you always have to look and, and, and make a good judgment on what you need to do. Then remove it. Now how do I know this is done? There's a few ways, a few things you could do. First, you can feel it, like the way you would feel a steak. And what you're looking for is firm firmness and it springs back. If it's still raw, it would be kind of mushy. And you can also look at the flaking. Fish has flakes and the natural seams will start to split when it's done. And if you're not sure, you can always go in with a little knife, pry it open and to see if it flakes easily. There's also residual cooking, carryover cooking, so you wanna keep that in mind, especially for a thick piece like this. It'll stay hot and keep cooking a little bit after you remove it from the pan. So you gotta take that into consideration. So the fish is, is done, and I'm just gonna quickly reheat the sauce. And at this point, because it's been sitting, if you look at it and it looks like okay, it needs a little bit more water if it's dried out over while it was sitting, now is the time to add water and adjust consistency. And then once it's boiling, I'm gonna turn it off. And then add some chopped cilantro. This is optional, you don't have to, but I think it's just a nice color, a nice freshness. And let's go plate. Okay, so is this ready? Yeah, it's pretty much ready and you want to have jasmine rice ready for this as well. So for nicer presentation, rather than just drenching the whole thing in sauce, you want to just spoon a couple of tablespoons over and then the rest pour it on the side. That way the crispy bits stay crispy and it's not, you know, just covered in sauce. So is this a pretty typical, I guess, lunch dish? Actually, this would be a typical dinner, dinner dish. dish? Okay. Yeah, because as I said before, it typically uses a whole, a whole deep whole fried fish. fish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty elaborate thing. So remember these two that we saved? It's a pretty elaborate thing to, to have. And that's it. This is our para <laughs> And thanks, Rodney, for the fish. This is definitely your hey, scene. Yeah, I can't wait. I look forward to try it. Yeah, and if you actually have a video of you catching this halibut. Mm -hmm, yes, so I will put that link in the description of my video. And if you've got any more questions about fishing, you can visit fishingwithrod.com. And 
and thanks for tuning in for this written recipe. Visit hotthaikitchen.com and I will see you next time for your next delicious time.